Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week and then post the archive recording on our website. Um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of those recordings. Uh, we will, we do include both the uh, recorded show uh, as posted up to the Library Commission's YouTube channel and um, any slides or handouts or documents that um, any presenters have. So these slides that Alicia is doing right now, um, later she'll be sending to me and then we'll post them up along with the archive. So um, I think we had mentioned this when we did our test earlier. You don't have to worry about uh, scribbling down any URLs or websites or anything. You have access to all of that um, afterwards. Um, we do a um, mixture of things here on Encompass Lives, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of services and products, um, things that we think libraries may be interested in. And at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the uh, state agency for libraries in the state, and that is all types of libraries. So you will find things on our show and in our archives for public libraries, K-12, academic schools, um, museums, correctional facilities, all across the board. Basically, if it's a library, we'll have something on the show about it. <laughs> um, that's really our only criteria. Um, we do sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do things that are very specific to what we are doing here at the Library Commission or offering to our um, uh, libraries in the state, but we also bring in guest speakers. And um, that's what we have this morning on the line with us this morning from just down south from us in Kansas is um, Alicia Lillick and she is at, um, good morning Alicia. Morning. And she's um, one of the um, library staff um, uh, associated with a network, National Network of Libraries of Medicine um, through the Nas U.S. National Library of Medicine. Um, and I don't know, are you going to explain exactly how that organization works? Yes, for, yes okay, I will. <laughs> um, we, she's, she's joining us from Kansas. We do have our own staff that do do this here in Nebraska as well. Each state has their own person. Um, our particular person here in Nebraska, Robin Woods, was unable to join us this morning. Um, so we got Alicia, she, she got Alicia, and she was graciously agreed to fill in for her for today. So maybe on another, sometime in the future, we'll get to meet Robin. <laughs> Um, but this morning, she's going to talk about some health education resources that are available um, through the National Network of Libraries of Medicine and how libraries can use that. So um, I'll just uh, shut up now and let you take it away, Alicia. Thank you so much. So yes, um, as mentioned, my name is Alicia Lillick. I'm a medical librarian, and I work for the National Network of Libraries of Medicine in their mid-continental region. And my official job title is the Kansas Outreach and Technology Coordinator. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but basically, my job is to provide outreach and training on you know, health information resources. So that's what I'm here to do today. Um, so as mentioned, these slides will be made available to you. Um, so there's no need to um, rush and write down all those URLs. Um, but if at any point you have questions, um, need me to repeat something, feel free to chime in in the chat. Um, and I'm ha I'd be happy to address that. This isn't like a formal lecture. I'm just trying to share some good information with you. Yep, anytime you guys can type into the questions section, it's called questions and you go to webinar interface, type in there. I'm monitoring it here on my side and I can um, read over any of those questions. Um, also, I should say, I didn't say it's the beginning, if you have a microphone, you can also use your microphone to ask your questions. Um, just instead type in, I have a mic, please unmute me, and um, you can ask your question that way. Yeah, feel free to dive right in. <laughs> Uh, so uh, our organization's a little confusing, so I'm going to actually start off with some background information on that and how it works, and then we'll actually get into the bulk of the presentation. Uh, so I found this really great chart that really just kind of breaks down who we are it's like, uh, in the whole overview of government health information. Um, so at the top of the chart is the National Institutes of Health, and you know, this is the nation's premier research institute. There's actually 27 institutes and centers of the National Institutes of Health, and one of those centers is the National Library of Medicine. Now, the National Library of Medicine 
isn't the library for the National Institutes of Health. Instead, it's the biomedical library for everyone in the country. And it is the world's largest medical library. Um, it's located in Bethesda, Maryland, but it has a vast amount of resources that are made available online to anyone everywhere in the world. And one of the um, ways that the National Library of Medicine tries to reach out to people throughout the country is through the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. Um, so that we're kind of the boots on the ground outreach uh, librarians that uh, support health information access throughout the entire country. Um, there are actually eight regional medical libraries and five offices. Um, and those regional medical libraries are based out of a university health science library. Um, and they serve to really um, help out the very distinct needs of each region. So you can kind of see on this map here, we're spread out pretty far. And our region is region number four, right smack dab in the middle of the country. Um, and the National Network of Libraries of Medicine doesn't just serve the continental US. Um, we have services to any US state and territory. Uh, and then our resources are freely available to anyone in the world. So um, they can be used to support people in other countries. Um, that's not a problem. So my region where I work out of is a little bit unique. Um, we serve six states. Um, and it's a pretty vast amount of space. You know, we go from Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. And we serve all of these states, but we've noticed, you know, that each state is pretty unique. So unlike all the other um, regions, um, we actually have a coordinator in each state in our region. Um, so I serve in Kansas, and then um, Robin Woods is the Nebraska coordinator. Um, but our main office is our main office is based out of the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. So you mentioned um, that the different local ones are at um, the different health sciences libraries. And just for those of you in Nebraska, Robin is actually at Creighton University's health sciences library up in Omaha. That's where she's based out of. That's correct, yes. Um, and so you can find information on our website to learn more about our organization. Um, for the MCR, it's nnlm.gov slash MCR. If you're not from within our region, um, if you just go to nnlm.gov, um, it will actually tell you which region you are in um, to help you find that information. Okay, so now that I've given you some background on the NNLM, and I'm gonna use a lot of acronyms, so feel free to chime in if I am confusing you with that, um, but just gonna tell you about our objectives for this webinar today. Um, the first thing I wanna do is really help you develop skills and knowledge of current trends in health literacy and how that impacts librarianship. Then I'm going to increase your awareness of National Library of Medicine resources on general health, drug information, also environmental health. And then at the end, I'll give a brief overview of the NNLM resources that can support your library specifically. Uh, so to start off with, I'm gonna talk a little bit about consumer health and health literacy. And it's good to start with a definition because you're gonna hear these terms come up a bit. Um, Consumer health refers to all the things that are related to the health of the individual consumer or the actual user of health services. So if you go to the doctor, if you talk to a nurse, uh, if you get a flu shot, you know, you're a health consumer. Um, and that's probably everyone here um, with, you know, it's not very easy to not be a health consumer uh, this day and age. Um, so we talk a lot about consumer health resources. Um, consumer health information includes materials that are written for the layperson, and they're not technical in, in nature. Um, so these are easy to understand materials. But um, an individual per patient layperson doesn't really usually identify as a health consumer. So they're not really sure what it means when you say, oh, let me show you this health, con this consumer health uh, website or this consumer health information resource. Uh, so it's kind of an internal jargon, but it does get used a lot. So I wanted to start off just um, spelling that out for you. And then the next big definition that's important to know about is health literacy. Uh, this is uh, related a lot to information literacy, which as librarians we know a lot about. Um, 
but health literacy is specific to an individual's um, degree to understand and uh, obtain, communicate, process basic health information and services in order to make appropriate health decisions. Um, so there's a lot involved in this definition, but in the in the general, you know, health literacy is, you know, how can they actually understand their own health and make those decisions? A lot goes into health literacy. Um, you know, for someone to have adequate health literacy, there's a lot that they need to be able to do. Think about what goes on when you try and make a doctor's appointment or make a health decision. Um, in the first place, you need to actually be able to access healthcare services. So, you know, you need to know how do I make a doctor's appointment? How do I know if they work with my health insurance? Um, how do I know if this is a, a situation where I should go to the emergency room or visit um, my physician or go to a walk-in clinic? Um, a lot of health decisions require you to analyze relative risks and benefits. You know, are the side effects of this medication worth um, the, the benefits of it? Um, or maybe should I consider this surgery? Um, something you might need to do is calculate a dosage. That can be uh, complicated. You have to be able to communicate with healthcare providers, which is not always easy. Um, evaluate information that you receive for credibility and quality. Um, you know, someone told me, oh, I got this really great article from my aunt um, on this herbal supplement that's gonna cure cancer. You know, how do you as an individual know if that's credible quality information? Um, someone might need to interpret health results or just locate health information. Uh, some other things I was thinking of when I looked at this list that are important for health literacy could be understanding nutrition labels. That's always a difficult task. Um, some something that I've known I've struggled with is completing a family health history form. And then something I'm sure we've all struggled with is selecting appropriate health insurance. You know, making that difficult decision on which plan to choose or which plan am I eligible for. So when you think about all of these dis different tasks that could be involved in health literacy, um, there's different um, parts of health literacy you need to ha have in order to complete those. Um, you need to be visually literate, able to understand graphs or visual information. You may need to be computer literate. You know, if this is online health information, you have to be able to actually operate a computer to locate it. Um, you need to be information literate, you know, be able to find that information, understand it, evaluate it. Uh, a lot of health uh, information, you need to be numerically or computationally literate. Can you calculate or reason numerically? So a good example of um, utilizing these skills um, that, I, that I thought of that instantly came to mind is um, when I had a baby and she had a fever, I needed to give her Tylenol. So, there was a lot of tasks involved in figuring out how much Tylenol to give my baby. First, I had to find an, an infant Tylenol dosage chart. Um, and so I had to go online and search for this chart because it wasn't on the box that, or it wasn't on the bottle that I had. So I had to go online and find the correct dosage chart because it has changed in the last few years. And a chart for for infants um, is broken down by age and weight. So I had to go through the chart, figure out the age and weight, and I had to read the small fine print on the chart that said um, that you should actually be calculating based on weight first, then age. So since my daughter was a little chubby, um, she was at a higher weight than her age. Then. I looked at the little plunger I had, and to get the correct amount of Tylenol into the plunger, I had to do some math because the plunger was too small for the dosage I needed. So I had to do two different dosages. Um, so I had to do all of this stuff. I had to look at graphs, I had to operate a computer, I had to make sure the information was correct, and I had to do um, some some actual math to figure out how much to give her. And 
this was not an easy task and I was very nervous about it. Um, and I'm a medical librarian that deals with this kind of stuff all the time. So uh, there's a lot that's involved in health literacy. And like I said, you know, health literacy, it can impact anyone, um, but limited health literacy especially impacts um, some very vulnerable people, older adults, racial and ethnic minorities, um, people with a less than high school degree or a GED certificate, um, people with low income levels, non-native speakers of English, uh, people with compromised health status, or people with learning obstacles. Um, they're, they're already um, having some issues and then they have to deal with this low health literacy that can really impact their health. Um, so medical, the medical field is really starting to look into addressing limited health literacy, um, but and, and they are making a lot of progress, but they're not quite there. Um, this quote I thought was really interesting. I say that patients with limited literacy, when compared to those with adequate literacy, more often report that their doctors use words they don't understand, speak too fast, don't provide enough information about medical conditions, and fail to make certain that they understand their health problems. So these doctors are just yap, yap, yapping away, giving all this um, maybe highly detailed information, and they're not really checking to make sure the patient understands. So what does this mean to you as a librarian? Well, a patron with a health question or looking for health information, they might be embarrassed to admit that they have low literacy or low health literacy levels. Um, a lot of times they're facing communication or language barriers, and they may be dealing with health issues that result in being shy, embarrassed, they might be angry, worried, irrational, or difficult to comprehend. So like in any reference interaction, you know, you should always try and be approachable, non-judgmental, empathetic, respectful, and just know your audience. Uh, so some good, a good tool to keep in mind um, is this chart called, or this document called Everyday Words for Public Health Communication, um, which is published by the Centers for Disease Control. Um, and they share this, I, th I found this um, pretty funny uh, tweet picture of a street sign and it says, no person shall on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday, the day preceding a public holiday or on a public holiday, drive or cause to be driven between the hours of 6 p.m. and midnight, a motor vehicle which exceeds 10.5 meters in length in all main roads. <laughs> so this is quite a sign. What does it mean? Um, you can sit there and try and parse this for a really long time. A lot of health information feels like that. Um, you know, if you have gotten a, a prescription and you've ever tried to read that packet that comes with it and you're trying to understand what it means, you're, you're faced with a lot of language like this. So the CDC has worked really hard on making sure that the information they put out um, is written in plain language that um, anyone can understand. So some tips that they provide for um, communicating with your audience in a way they understand the first time is to really organize to serve the audience. Um, and I think these are really great tips if you're ever putting together a health page on your library website, um, thinking about what language to use when during a reference interaction, um, maybe uh, helping create a resource or planning a health outreach event. Um, but you want to make sure you actually know your audience. Um, it's made for their level. Um, you need to choose your words carefully. Um, they say to, you know, write or talk in the active voice. Use you and other pronouns. Um, choose words and numbers your audience knows. And make information easy to find. You know, keep it simple, short and simple. Um, and easy to parse. And an example from their document here, um, they actually take commonly used jargon words, uh, medical words, and show how they originally were used in CDC materials and then how they updated it in plain language. Plain, plain language. So the first example is the word activate. Um, and activate, which means begin, start, you know, they had a sentence that 
it said, if the worker does not exit or enter properly, a foot or hand control may be activated and may cause movement of the alarm, lift arms, bucket, or other attachment. Um, that's going to be really hard for someone to understand. Um, it's kind of hard for me to picture. But in the next sentence, the plain language sentence, it says, you must get in or out in a safe manner, or you may accidentally start a foot or hand control that moves the lift arms, bucket, or other attachment. So much easier to understand what they're trying to say here. That makes um, a lot more sense, yes. Mm -hmm. and why isn't doesn't say that in the first place? I Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's another example here is they're talking about the term acute. And they, you know, in the original sentence, they said, mumps is an acute viral illness. Um, most people don't exactly know what that means. And it, it's pretty vague, actually. You know, we know it's a sudden, uh, it says acute means a sickness that lasts a short time and goes away. But when they redid this plain language sentence, they said mumps usually causes the following symptoms for about seven to 10 days. So not only is it more plain language, but it's more specific too. So these are really, it's a really great tool um, to utilize for any type of health language materials. So now that you have some background on um, health literacy, consumer health, I'm going to dive into some National Library of Medicine resources. So there is actually a page um, that you can go to to see all of the National Library of Medicine online resources. Um, at this point, I believe there's like over 280 different resources available from the National Library of Medicine. Um, a lot of these are really specialized databases for researchers um, or APIs that you probably won't ever need to use um, that I don't really even ever know much about. Um, but I'm gonna focus on uh, five really great consumer level resources. Medline Plus, HealthReach, Daily Med, Pillbox, and Toxtown. Uh, but if you do follow the link in the previous slide, this is uh, what this page looks like. It's their e-resources page. Um, and you can actually go through here to find even training and instructional materials. Um, if you ever want to do a program about some of these resources, those tools are in here as well. Um, but you can go through and kind of see all of the different topics that National Library of Medicine online resources could cover. So I'm going to start with Medline Plus. Um, Medline Plus is the National Library of Medicine's premier consumer health resource. Um, it covers a whole lot of information that really is a kind of a one-stop shop for health information. Um, I compare it often to WebMD, um, which is a very popular for-profit website. Um, but unlike WebMD, Medline Plus doesn't have ads or sponsorships. Um, so you can kind of feel a little more comfortable with this information. Um, and what's in Medline Plus? Well, they have some licensed content. There's a medical encyclopedia. They actually have surgery videos. Um, they have drug information and dietary supplement information. There's original content. They have health topic summaries. Um, they have these, new, this is pretty new. They have lab test monographs that explain different lab tests. And they have um, magazine articles. And then there are, are, the bulk of the information you're gonna find on here is external web links. So these, they link out on health topics and health uh, information to federal government websites, medical association resources. Um, information from national organizations and health institutions, and these are all very heavily vetted um, for accuracy and currency. So this is a look at the Medline Plus homepage, uh, and I'll kind of break it down for you. Uh, so first off are health topics. These are their most popular um, part of the page, um, where you can find information on all different types of health, inf health topics. Then there's a drug and supplement section. So here you can learn about not just prescription drugs, but over-the-counter medicines, and then herbal medications and supplements. Um, and I think this is really important if um, people are coming to you and saying, you know, I need information on St. John's wort. Uh, if you do a search for that or you try and find information online about herbal supplements, a lot of that is very difficult to find reliable information. So it's this is a really great tool for that. 
there are videos and tools. Uh, there, there are some like health quizzes. Uh, there are surgical videos. I, I've watched several of them before I had a knee surgery um, earlier or last year. Um, and there's all games, anything you can kind of look at for just something fun to do. Um, I mentioned the lab test information. This is pretty new. We've had this for less than six months. Um, but you can um, help people understand what the lab tests are for and what the results actually mean. There's a medical encyclopedia, um, a great tool for just, you know, how do you pronounce this word and what does this actually mean? Um, and then my favorite thing about Medline Plus is that it is fully available and in English and Spanish. So at the top of every page, if you're on the English version, there's a link that says Espanol. If you click on that, it will reload the entire website exactly the same, but fully in Spanish. And in addition to the Spanish language resources, there's a link at the bottom of the homepage for health information in multiple languages. Um, so this is a good place to go for that. And I'll show you another resource in just a bit for health information in other languages. And then there are also easy to read materials. So these are like handouts that are written at a very, um, very easy to understand level. Um, everything from, you know, how do I, properly wash my hands to what is asthma. Um, they're just um, these very simple materials that can really help if someone's having trouble comprehending even the information on this site. And so I'm going to start with showing you the health topics. So if you click on the health topics where the arrow is or at the tab at the top, um, it brings you to this page. Now you can search for health topics, you can browse alphabetically, or you can take a look at how they're broken down. Um, so health topics, um, yeah, again, you can do A to Z. You can look by body locations or systems. This is really good for uh, maybe you have a student doing a project. Um, they want to get some more information that way. Um, disorders and conditions, diagnosis and therapy. They have health topics for specifically for different demographic groups, and then just general health and wellness topics. So we're going to click on food and nutrition uh, and go into the nutrition um, health topic page. So each health topic page is kind of laid out in the same way. Um, at the top, it has a menu that really breaks down what's available, and this varies based on what resources are available on the topic. Um, so it starts always with a summary um, of, you know, what the health topic page is actually about. And then it has a start here section, which is where you go to get the most um, accurate uh, resources. Where, where should you start to learn more about this? Um, and then they'll have different resources um, where you can learn more about it. If there are um, videos or tools, you can click on that. Um, Medline Plus does link to actual um, scholarly research as well. Um, so if you, know, if you have someone that wants more in-depth information, you can link them to statistics and research. Um, the journal articles link will actually bring them into accurate journal articles from PubMed. Um, there's a reference desk. There's actually a find an expert tool um, to help find like organizations that are active in this area. And then if there are resources specific to different audiences, maybe teenagers, children, men, women, elderly, um, they'll have, be linked under the For You section. So um, the top searches in 2018 haven't been released yet, but to give you an idea for 2017, um, looks like a lot of people are looking up sexually transmitted diseases, both in English and Spanish, and chlamydia infections. So maybe these are folks that, you know, are um, uncomfortable with this topic, talking to other people about it. Uh, so they want to go online and search on Medline Plus. Um, but this covers the gamut, you know, diabetes, cholesterol, breathing problems, thyroid disease, um, depression. Uh, it covers a little bit of everything. And there are actually over a thousand top uh, health topic pages on Medline Plus. So I mentioned earlier that um, there's another good resource for uh, information for in, in non-English. So Health Reach is a really great tool. It's a collaboration we do. Um, 
with a couple different groups on for patient education materials that are in multiple languages. And I believe they have over 40 different languages represented on this website. Um, so you can actually search by language. I know this has come up a lot um, with um, some of the areas that we serve that have a lot of refugee population. Um, they you know, are very, really struggling to find resources to help them, you know, understand a health topic. So HealthReach is a really great resource for that. You can search by language. Um, they have not just handouts, but they also have videos, um, even audio files. And we have a really, um, new, uh, really great new opportunity on HealthReach um, where we partnered with a group called Healthy Roads Media to produce this collection of materials on the opioid crisis. Um, there's 22 easy to read handouts, videos, audio recordings, both available in English and Spanish that really break down um, opioid, opioid abuse, um, treatment. And so HealthReach has this information listed right on their homepage. And I know that's um, a topic of interest in a lot of libraries right now. Um, so that's something, a, a great place you can go for that information. Uh, so next I'm going to show you Daily Med. Um, Daily Med is actually, it's pretty interesting. Um, you know those, hand, I mentioned earlier, those big documents you get with your prescription medication, um, the FDA labels um, or package inserts is what they call them. Um, so Daily Med is the official provider of those. Um, this is where anyone can go to find that information. So, you know, someone comes in and says, I have this pill bottle. I don't even know what this is for, or I have this big list of medication. Um, how do I find more about it? Daily Med is the, a great resource for that. Um, and it does link to other resources as well um, to find more information on medication. So this is what the homepage looks like. And then I have a sh short little video that shows you how it works. So you can start off by just typing in any information um, and it will pull up a drop down. Um, so you search for it and you get over to this page and you can actually pull up the package photos. You make sure you have the right, um, the right medication. It looks like this package here. Uh, zoom in around and find all that information. And then it has all the different sections on the drug label. So, you know, you want to find out what what the side effects are. What do you do if you accidentally take too much? How do you store it? It's all available here um, on this on this one website. So you can kind of scroll around here. You can download the whole thing. You can break it down into um, different sections and. It has this nice little printout too. Um, and I know folks that take a lot of medications like uh, have this and just get this for all of their medications and keep it with them. That, that's really, <clears throat> really awesome, especially they cram so much on those boxes. Mm -hmm. And I'm always trying to find the part that I want. <laughs> and it's yeah. just, oh no, it's around here. I know you have to take off the label and look on the inside or, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Like a treasure. Um, horrible, horrible. <laughs> So yeah, it's um oh sorry, it's playing again. Let's stop that. Okay. Uh so another um a link here is to the tablet capsule ID tool. I don't know why they call it something different on <laughs> Daily Med. Um, but you can also go directly to Pillbox. And Pillbox is a fabulous website. Um, this is for those times when you go, I found this medication and I don't know what it is. Um, school nurses love this resource because they're often the ones that are handed a baggie of pills that were found in the bathroom. And they have to decide, you know, what is this? What do I do with this? Is this a, you know, a serious issue? Or did someone, you know, bring ibuprofen to school and forget to tell us? Um, so Pillbox helps you quickly identify medications based on all different kinds of factors. Um, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. Um, pretty simple to do. So it has little drop downs. You can choose whichever one you want. So Imprint's a really great one. If there's a couple letters on the pill, you can just kind of type that in. Um, 
you can also search by shape. There's, there's all different kinds. Um, color. I don't know who would know the inactive ingredient, but it's there if you wanted to search for it. And it combines those different facets to tell you what a medication is. And then if you actually click on that medication, it will bring you back into um, the daily med so you can learn more about that pill that you may you may not have known you had um, or found. So I think this is a, just a really good tool to be aware of. Oh, and it's playing it again. Let's go. Okay, so the last NLM resource I'm going to show you is Toxtown. Um, this is an environmental health resource, um, and it's geared maybe a little, uh, maybe I'd say high school age and older, um, maybe some older middle school, um, but it's basic consumer level information about everyday locations and situations where people might be exposed to toxic chemicals. Um, so it helps you understand risks of exposure, potential health effects, and how to protect yourself. So Toxtown has all kinds of great information. You can use it to understand key concepts and terms related to environmental health and toxicology. Um, you can find guides and toolkits to help you take action to minimize exposure. Um, and find resources for making that connection between environment and health. So as students come in um, that might be working on some uh, environmental health uh, projects or maybe your community is involved in a citizen science project looking at um, water pollution, um, this is a, just a really great resource. And they do have a lot of tools for teachers. Um, shown on this page is a video called Silent But Leadly, um, and it's just a knockoff of superheroes, you know, understanding the dangers of lead. Um, so it's just another really great resource to be aware of um, if you're ever working with environmental health topics. All right, so now I'm going to talk about um, the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, um, and I'll talk about information specific to our region and beyond it. Um, so you know, the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, you know, our mission is to advance the progress of medicine and improve public health. Um, and we try to provide all health professional, professionals with equal access um, to biomedical information um, and try and get the public to have access to that information so they can make better decisions. Um, so we're spread out across the country, and I think there's really three main things that we try to do. We do training sessions like this one, um, where we raise awareness of National Library of Medicine resources and other health information that uh, resources you may need to know about. We offer funding on a variety of health-related um, projects, and we're a network. So um, folks can learn from each other, make connections, um, see what cool stuff um, one library might be working on and see about how they can implement it into their own program. So to give you a little taste, um, I thought I'd share some upcoming educational opportunities um, that might be of interest to you. Um, and all of, uh, not all of our classes, but most of our classes are um, provide um, continuing education credits from the Medical Library Association, if that's um, of interest to you. Um, so we offer our webinars nationally. They're open to anyone. Um, you don't have to sign up, they're free. Um, we usually ask that you register in advance um, just so we know who's coming and can prepare for that. So um, coming up, gosh, tomorrow um, is a course, a one hour webinar called Getting Started with Information Outreach in Your Community. Um, and this is just a course to help librarians initiate outreach programs um, with different populations. Um, so they'll talk about locating community demographics, how you develop relationships, um, the basics of building and developing community-based partnerships, um, and the importance of cultural competency. So that's a really great uh, webinar coming up tomorrow. And if you miss it, you can still um, follow this link and it will all be recorded and available via YouTube for you to watch at your convenience. Another great program, oops, went too far. Another um, interesting uh, webinar that's coming up um, is on Tuesday, April 2nd. And this is the summer, 
they're talking about the summer library programming and library moonwalk. Um, so NNLM as an organization has partnered with the Collaborative Summer Learning Program to help bring health programming uh, to libraries for summer reading. Nice. So they've come up with this universe of stories um, booklet um, and it's coming to public libraries this summer in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. Mm -hmm. So they have um, resources and information, and then they have um, some programming ideas, things like exploring DNA and family history, how to make stardust, um, astronaut food, um, and many more science programs that are appropriate for kids, teens, and adults. And then this uh, webinar is also going to talk about the Library Moonwalk. This is a really fun program uh, from upstate New York. So they said, you know, a walk from, from their area to the moon is approximately 238, 900 miles. Um, but they're, they're come up with this program um, from a whole bunch of different library systems where they've received some funding from NNLM to get their patrons moving, dancing, um, learning about health and wellness. And they're logging their steps, their miles to try and reach that 238, 900 miles. So the whole region is trying to walk to the moon. It's their library moon walk. Um, oh, and that's- I was wondering what that was gonna be. That's <laughs> very creative, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, real, it's a really fun program. And so, um, and it's something that, you know, you might be able to emulate in your library, um, you know, to think about how could we come up with a cool program like this? And we do offer funding for programming that and of that nature. Um, similar to that, on April 3rd um, is a, a webinar on music and movement at the library. Uh, and this was a program that we helped fund for interactive music-based programming for infants and toddlers. Uh, and this was from the Mount Zion District Library in Illinois. Um, they realized they didn't really have much activities for their under two-year-olds. Um, so they decided to add a music and movement uh, for a program for children ages six to 24 months and their caregivers. Think, and they do things like, you know, participate in singing interactive songs, investigate instruments like drums and xylophones. They're learning sign language. Um, and it's a fun program, but educational and full of benefits. Um, so this webinar, they're gonna talk about how you can learn to implement a similar program at your library. Uh, and you don't need to have any background in music. And then um, if I sparked some interest in health literacy, when I talked about it earlier, on Monday, April 8th is a class on health literacy, its importance to you. Um, and, you know, how do you learn more about health literacy? Do you want to learn more about how it impacts um, patient care and uh, will affect healthcare in the future? Um, this is a good webinar for you. But we offer, um, you know, hun maybe not hundreds, yeah, probably hundreds of these webinars um, throughout the network, um, and they're all open to anyone. It doesn't matter where you're located. Um, you can always jump in and check out some of these programs. This is just a little bit of a taste. Uh, if you follow the, any of these links, you'll be on our training page, and you can see many, many more. And then they're all recorded as well for yes. if you can't make it on the dates that they're actually uh, broadcast live? Absolutely, yes, that's correct. Um, and one other um, series of courses I wanted to highlight is PubMed for Librarians. Um, this is a very, very popular um, course. And this is something that, you know, if you ever are working with PubMed, I've, I feel like it's a little more complicated than other databases. Um, and there's, because there's a lot more that goes into it. Um, so if you ever wanna really get some in-depth information on PubMed, this series is offered, I think it's twice a year. Um, they just started it yesterday, but this will be recorded. Um, and these are five 90 minute um, segments presented via WebEx, they're recorded for future viewing, they're standalone modules, um, and you can sign up from, and take them to learn about um, how PubMed is used. Um, so that's just a cool little tool for you to be aware of. Uh, so um, I mentioned funding, and right now um, in the MCR, we do have a little bit of professional development funding of left. Um, so, you know, if you're a librarian in our region um, and you want to 
our, our fiscal year ends April 30th, but if you have something you want to do very quickly, watch a webinar that costs money, um, we can help support you with that. Um, and we offer this every year. It'll start again in May. Um, we really are trying to help everyone advance and grow and learn more about health information. Um, another really great funding opportunity we have is that we're offering sponsorships for um, the Medical Library Association's Consumer Health Information Specialization. So this is um, a specialization. It's basically like an award you can get um, to show that you under, are a good person that understands consumer health. You have a good background in it. Um, and to get the uh, certificate, you have to complete a minimum of 12 continuing education credits in consumer health information. So um, generally, usually this award costs, I think it's like $125, but we're offering sponsorships, um, at least for the next couple of years until we run out of funds for it. Um, for anyone who's in anywhere in the US um, that wants to take these courses for free um, to get the certification. And that looks really good for your library to say, you know, I have staff trained on the, in this specialization. It looks good for you. It's a good thing to add to your resume. Um, so that's something that we're offering uh, right now and up into the future that you may be interested in. Um, and then we have, I thought I'd just point out some of our upcoming funding opportunities from the Mid-Continental Region. Um, so I mentioned our fiscal year starts in May. Um, so it runs May to April. Um, and we're about to announce our new funding opportunities. So I'd give you a little sneak peek. Um, we have a lot of different um, awards to help you do different things. Um, so maybe you have an idea. You want to collaborate on a program or a project um, with a community group a school or a different library in your area, um, we have funding for that. Um, if you have some pro public library programs that are health or nutrition related, um, we can help you fund that. Um, maybe you want to try out citizen science where um, folks in your library are actually participating in uh, scientific research. Um, there are a lot of pro, uh, programs like monitoring water quality or air pollution. Um, we can help fund that. Um, if you have technology that's used for health information access that needs to be upgraded or um, an idea for a new technology you want to utilize, um, that's an option. If you want to promote diversity uh, related in, to health in some way, uh, that's another award we have. And then we're also um, providing some awards to help you engage in planning or conduct research. So if you want to do a deep dive on the health needs of your community or plan for future health programming, um, that's something new we're, we're trying to offer this year. Um, but if you're not in our region or you want to just see all the different funding opportunities, we have an NNLM funding page that you can actually go through and search for. You can filter by your region or by the category um, or by keyword. So I'm going to stop there and open it up to questions. OK. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> OK, does anybody have any questions? Um, uh, please do go ahead and type them into your um, go to webinar questions section um, of your interface there. Um, I'm just getting it open here for myself. All right. Um, no, so far nobody had any questions during your presentation while you're okay. talking. That's fine. Um, I think it was a lot of really good information uh, here, both um, as I was watching it, I was putting down some personal things for me to use these, uh, like the, the drug uh, information, as you mentioned, and just, um, I, li I like that it is, um, that's like Medline Plus is they're out there free for everyone to use. Yes. There are so many people, including me, and um, being a librarian, I, I do it, who Google for whatever they, you know, they're looking for something, for stuff about me, um, my family, um, I am. I do see the WebMD things that come up along with all sorts of other, uh, the association for whatever disease or, mm -hmm. or symptom. And it's hard sometimes to tell, are they really that association? Are they some company just trying to sell me their resource or drug yeah. or, or, or treatment? Um, 
and knowing that the you know Medline Plus that's the one you know search look through all these search results and go to there or just go there to start with. I mean I think that's the education thing that we as librarians have to do is have classes or something that says looking for health info go here don't just mm -hmm. Google. If you know yeah. how to filter through all of the hundreds of results you get sure like us as we as librarians have that skill but my mom my my you know that she's not gonna know <laughs> exactly. yeah <laughs> she'll call me but you know when she's on her own mm -hmm. um, I think well, it's a great point people that and i wish you know things like and i don't think when i do do i mean medline plus is public out there but i don't know that it comes up in like general searches um it it does but it's usually yeah. kind of low in the results unfortunately uh -huh. because you know we don't have an advertising budget so and i do have results yeah. that actually say like in the url nlm or something like that mm -hmm. or um some government you know beginning of the of the url to know okay this is something the official not just who knows who but yeah and and the nice thing is, you know, if you are if you do come across, you know, an organizational website, you can check on what Medline Plus to see if that's someone that they link to, because that shows that they've already vetted it, um, and that's really helpful. But yeah, I think even you know, if we're super information literate, when it comes to health issues, you kind of you're not always uh, at your top game. You know, you're a little panicky, or you're hoping to find. Oh. You, you want to find that link that tells you what you want to hear. Um, we all, we've all hit that point. Something's already wrong is the reason you're looking it up. You, mm -hmm. not, you're, when you're healthy and doing fine, you don't necessarily go and look up, you know, heart disease just because you want to know just in case. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. because you have a diagnosis or your doctor has said something or you're feeling some symptoms that you're not sure about. I mean, you're already stressed out and yeah. Well, I will say um, I put up a slide here. Um, so if you are in Nebraska, Robin Woods is your N Nebraska Outreach Coordinator um, and she does education as well. She is a fabulous mm -hmm. trainer. Um, she's really great at collaboration. She's based out of Creighton University. Um, mm -hmm. And she, you know, if you need help and, and you're in Nebraska, you can always reach out to me also. I'm happy to help, but um, Nebraska, uh, Robin's your go-to. Right. Um, and if you're not in Nebraska and if you're outside the MCR, you can also go to the nnlm.gov website um, mm -hmm. to locate your region uh, and find your coordinators there because there are there's a big group of us. There's mm -hmm. um, I think there's 100 people in all in the entire network and we are happy and willing to help out in any way we can. And Robin will come to um, your library or your um, event to do mm -hmm. presentations too. That's actually how I got on her radar. Someone here attended a session, I think it was last fall, that she presented at. And then one of our staff people here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and they brought me her card. I have her card here actually, and said, "Hey, this was a great session. You should contact her." And I did. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we ended up with this this session finally. Um, so she's gone to some of our library events. So if you have something you you know. If you're not sure that you have the expertise to teach about this as a presentation, that's something that she could come and do um, on your behalf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For you. That's correct. Yeah. All right. So it doesn't look like anybody has any other questions. And um, <clears throat> we're getting close to the top of the hour. Um, any last last words, Alicia, that you want to throw out there before we wrap it up? <laughs> I think that's it. Thanks to everyone for coming. Yeah, there's a lot of great information. I know we've had people on um, Encompass Live before, um, uh, previous staff people before Robin and whatnot over the years. And I always like to get updates on what's going on because there's always new things mm -hmm. coming in. So this is kind of a regular thing for those of you who watch the show. Um, so we'll always, you know, as I talk to Robin at some point, we'll have her, we'll definitely get her on the show <laughs> when she can make it for us. So in the future, there'll be some more. So always keep an eye on if this is something that you're interested in at your library. Um, look at our archives of previous ones, but keep your eye open for other new ones we may have um, in the future. Um, and as we said, uh, the slides, Alicia's going to be sending them to me. So um, when we get the recording up, you'll have that. And within those slides, you saw those links to all the different um, the different webinars that are coming up and everything. You'll have the quick links to all of those. Um, afterwards. So thank you very much Alicia for being with us this morning and filling in and, and joining us up here and thank you everyone for attending. I'm going to pull the screen back to mine here and there we go. So this is uh, the session for today but uh, the recording will be up. Let's see here. There we go. Ah.
um, I would say by the end of the day today, as long as we also post our archives, our recordings to YouTube, um, and as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me, um, by the end of the day today, these are upcoming shows. But if you go to the underneath there, there's a link to our archives, and this is where we have all of our all of our previous shows on here, and this is the one from last week where we will have the same thing of viewed links of recording and a link to the presentation that you'll be able to access. Uh, everyone who attended this morning live or registered will get an email from me letting you know um, when it's ready. Uh, we also post it out to our mailing lists and our social media as well. Um, and while I'm here in the archives, I'll let you know this is um, we have a search feature here. This is 2019 is actually the 11th year of Encompass Live. So we and we have all of our archives here on this page. So this is a very long page going all the way back to the first one, which was in January 20, 2009. Um, so we do have a search feature at the top here. You can search for um, the entire history of the show if you want to, or just the most recent year. Um, but do be aware whenever you do bring anything up, uh, look at the date, make sure when it took place. Um, you know, we've got some, there will be uh, old information, outdated information, links, services might not exist anymore or work. Um, but we are librarians, so this is what we do. <laughs> we are collecting archive things. So um, just pay attention when you are looking at our website at the dates to know, you know, what um, uh, the topic is about. So uh, that over at that's for today. So, so I hope you join us next week when our topic is nonprofit basics for libraries. Um, we have uh, our uh, Trev Peterson, who's uh, from a law firm here in Lincoln, will be joining us to cover some of these things. Um, if you need to know information about fundraising and taxes and interlocal local agreements, all sorts of things, anything related to being a nonprofit as a library, either you or your um, friends group or foundation, um, this is the show for you. Um, if you have some questions you do want to um, have him specifically answer, send them to me ahead of time and um, we can get them to him so we can prepare. Otherwise, you can come just on the show um, next week and um, ask him. So definitely sign up for that if you're interested in that or any of our other upcoming shows we have here. We have our April and May shows on the calendar. Uh, and <coughs> Excuse me, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. Oh, we do post on Facebook. Um, here's a reminder to log into today's show when our recordings are available. So if you do um, like to use Facebook and you want to be you have some notifications from us there, um, give us a like over there and you'll be notified whenever we're doing things every week. Other than that, that wraps up for this morning's show. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Alicia, for being here with me. And I hope we will see you uh, next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.